Hey everybody, just wanted to do a uh, quick little video here. Actually, it's probably going to be kind of long. I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> but, um, you know, a couple of things kind of hit me a certain way and sort of inspired me to make a video. Uh, Stevie from the UK, he, uh, from Wakefield, he had sent me some records. Um, I'll save it for a proper mailbag, but he sent me some 45s, 7 inches, whatever you want to call them. And... Uh, I just I have a lot of 45s. I was just sort of thinking about, um, I really hadn't showed any of them. And it's kind of the format that I've been doing videos. It's just like, unless it's new stuff, I don't really go back and talk about it. So uh, kind of looking at my old videos, I just sort of thought about like sort of doing like spotlight stuff. So uh, what I figure I would do is, uh, this is just sort of like a, uh, a vinyl finds time machine, if you will. Uh, just to kind of want to show you kind of what, what I was buying, what I was listening to in like early 2000, um, like 1999, 2000, 2001, things like that. Um, that I would say really that's kind of when I started record collecting, um, kind of more so where I would be buying that rather than CDs or, um, you know, I would find records that seemed to be either stuff that was out of print or you know, just kind of seem to, um, you know, just kind of catch my eye. So uh, I guess kind of the, the, the way that the story starts is there is a record shop in Pittsburgh that I used to basically drive from my hometown. I would drive to Pittsburgh and um, right next to the record store, well, maybe like a block up from it is just this fantastic sushi place. It's like, you know, the number one sushi place in Pittsburgh, basically. And, uh, you know, on the wall, they have all the, you know, all the Steelers and uh, whatnot, you know, go and, and eat uh, sushi there. But it's, it's, a, it's a great place. And, uh, you know, my friends and I, you know, when we were in high school, we would, um, basically when we would get paid, uh, we would drive down to the city and um, pretty much just get a bunch of sushi and uh, we'd go to the record store. And uh, it just kind of became a habit where it would be like I would get paid and we would come down to Pittsburgh and I would return broke, uh, you know, the same day kind of thing. But, you know, it was it was all it was all, it, you know, it, the reason I'm here today is because I did that. Basically, I don't think I would. I don't think I would be here if I didn't do that. So at this record shop, um, you know, of course, I, I always am, am concerned about a good deal and trying to get, you know, the most bang for my buck. So uh, I used to buy a lot of 7-inch records. Uh, you know, this place had it's kind of a not necessarily an indie store, but uh, they definitely had a lot of records and a lot of CDs. They have comic books. Um, a lot of times when I get like my real crazy records, like my crazy scores, um, that's the place you can go and buy it. I mean, if you pretty much if money is no object, you know, it's, that's the place you want to go. Like they had a, a mono copy of, uh, the white album for like $300. I don't know if it's still there or not, but it was there a few months ago. But, um, I, this morning I was just kind of going through, kind of cleaning up around here, being productive, as my wife would say, you know, making the most of my day off rather than sitting around and, you know, listening to music or whatever. But, um, just kind of thinking about those seven inches kind of got me thinking about my collection and I went through all these 45s and uh, you know I pulled out uh, I would say these 15 I think they're 15 here I think I counted I took them all out of the plastic sleeves but these are sort of um, you know have hold a certain place in my heart I mean for some of you people will probably be like what but um, you know at the same time that's what I was listening to and uh, Blake I have a project for you so as you can see, these are, uh, you know, <laughs> sunlight cannot penetrate these. So I don't know. I don't know if uh, maybe that's your next, uh, maybe your next adventure. I don't know. Talk to me if, if that's something that, because uh, I will, I will be very interested. So just want to show a few of these. Uh, this is kind of going back to like my old videos when I used to just talk about music. So um, just, you know, some of this stuff is just, you know, I've just listened to the crap out of, and really some of this stuff too. Um, I was looking on eBay today because I was just like, oh, I wonder how much of these are, 
these are going for and some of the stuff is pretty desirable and I paid maybe like two three dollars for most of these but uh, here's the first one it's uh, annual know us by the trail of dead or just trail of dead um, always a difficult one when you're trying to figure out where this goes in the alphabetizing um, but this has uh, another morning stoner which I think was probably their one of their biggest hits that they had uh, aside from I think monsoon which was just a you know just a really great band um, this came out in uh, I think 2000 uh, I think 2000 maybe 2002 I can't remember but um it's really cool. It has a little poster with it. Uh, it's on colored vinyl. Uh, I, it's just kind of. I always used to go through the seven inches because these were only just a few dollars, and I thought it was always just you know really cool to get. So great band. I don't. I think they're defunct now. I don't really know what the heck they're doing. But um, I went through a phase where I was just a huge fan of this guy. Uh, I had friends that actually hung out with him and all that. But uh, Andrew W K. How can you forget this song? When it's time to party, we will always party hard. So, uh, and I think Violent Life, I don't believe that was on the album. That was like a B-side kind of only thing. <laughs> it's really great stuff. Um, here's She is Beautiful, We Want Fun. This is like a limited, it's uh, 1333, which is I think a pretty good number. Um, this is from 2002. She is Beautiful and also We Want Fun. I mean, this guy was just... Yeah, he's still around. I mean, his albums were, when he came out, I was um, pretty blown away. I mean, one thing to keep in mind, too, I used to read a lot of Spin Magazine um, around this time. So a lot of these that I picked up, it was because I heard about them uh, in Spin Magazine. So, you know, definitely, I, I look at Spin now, and every once in a while when I, you know, either go to the grocery store or something like that, and I see it on the uh, the counter, and I just look at it, and it's just... I don't know. Uh, even in 2000, you know, everybody always talked about what it was like in the early 90s and how it was so, you know, cutting edge and all that. But um, the one thing I found out that was really cool about Spin Magazine is if you read the whole thing cover to cover, there would always be like one artist that would just be like a little footnote. And I would always kind of try to look for those people. And then it would be like, you know, down the road, like within six months, it was like, you know, the, the hype was, you know, big. And then at that point they were, you know, huge. Um, it's, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's, if that's still relevant <laughs> these days, but um, you know, I music research. It's, I, I love to do it. I love reading about music and all that. So uh, here's another one, just, um, you know, a lot of people may not know who this band is, but of course, I'm sure you've listened to stuff that these guys were involved in um, at the drive-in. Uh, just, oh my God, they were so good. Um, just the, uh, what is the, the Relationship of Command, I think is the name of the album, had Iggy Pop on it, but I remember being on vacation and uh, I went to a music store and they actually had it there and I was like, holy crap. So I bought it. I just you know, played it nonstop. Just an awesome, awesome band. I'm sure the LP of that is, you know, worth hundreds of dollars. So this came out in 2001. Uh, this is on, some of these I need to put in paper sleeves, but now it's on yellow vinyl. Uh, another band, this was a band that I read about in Spin Magazine, and then they, they were one of the ones that just sort of picked up um, and for all of our Swedish friends, namely Jonas. Uh, the Hives, this is uh, Main Defender. They were just a really cool band. I love the style. It was like sort of a throwback to the, uh, you know, the garage rock um, kind of thing. Just was really, really cool. I like their style. They all, you know, were at the time when this stuff came out, I was listening to a lot of punk music. So um, it was kind of an easy transition for me because that was sort of, you know, they were on Burning Heart, which was. Um, for you uh, punk fans out there was sort of a subsidiary of you know epitaph uh that had you know like rancid and uh bad religion and you know those types of bands uh I, probably their best song most i don't know if that was on color vinyl or not um hate to say i told you so just totally cool really big fans of these guys <laughs> i mean the, this album i think this was their second album really that they put out but it was like you know they were they were unstoppable for a while there that i think that year whatever that was 2002 yeah 2002 for me was just 
I mean, I was just so into like new music and it was before, you know, these guys were, you know, it, they were in sort of the, the pop music, you know, the return to rock. But, um, and the next band, now I saw this band a couple of times and they're just, you know, I would put them up there as probably one of the greatest concerts that I've ever saw. Uh, it's another Swedish band. Um, Jonas, help me out here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever had the uh, opportunity to see them or not. I don't know if this is what you, you know, the kind of music that you listen to, but uh, the International Noise Conspiracy. This is from their second album, Capitalism Stole My Virginity. Um, just, man, there's some, you know, lyrics that are still uh, relevant to this day. I love their style. It was sort of the, you know, throwback 60s garage kind of thing. Um, really really cool stuff from them man i saw them the guy was like he would do james brown moves you know he took the microphone and you know he'd take it and you know come back and you know do the the, the who twirl around the head and you know it was just seriously like you know I, they probably only played for like 45 minutes or whatever but it was just like you know 100 miles an hour the whole entire show smash it up really good stuff and then what's cool on the back is, you know, of course they have sort of the, uh, you know, they're sort of the political leanings here. Uh, I mean, they're still around. Uh, personally, I think they sort of fizzled out. They had really two amazing albums and then they sort of had a major label album. I don't remember what it was called. I have it, but I don't remember what it's called offhand. Um, it just seemed to be so overproduced. And, you know, the, the way that this, this band sounds the best to me is just, you know, stripped down basically and just, you know, just rock and roll at its finest. Now they really didn't get, you know, they really didn't get play on uh, MTV or anything like that. MTV too, maybe, but not like the Hives did or anything like that. Uh, and the record is just sort of a black, black label. Um, probably their my, you know, I'd say probably their their best song, which is just amazing. Uh, the reproduction of death, just oh my goodness. And they quote, you know, The Clash, Working for the Clampdown. Most of these, like I said, were probably like two ninety nine dollars when I first bought them. So um, just fantastic music, you know. Um, just trying to think of what else. Really, the one, th one thing I guess I want to say is I really didn't buy too many LPs. I mean, at the time, a lot of those records were, if you went to shows, um, I do have a small kind of, you know, punk LP collection. I have some other, you know, 45, seven inches, whatnot. Um, it was just kind of one of those things that I didn't really, for me, spending $10 on a record, which most of the times that's what it was, or 15 for the vinyl, um, <laughs> working minimum wage. And at the time, I think it was like 535 an hour was what I was making. Um, and maybe only working 20 hours a week, you know, part time. It was kind of one of those things you had to stretch your dollars as much as you could. I was going to tons of shows. I mean, I would probably go to a show a week. Um, you know, some bands like Less Than Jake. I'm going to probably see Less Than Jake here in the next, I think it's they're coming in a month or so. So may uh, show some stuff from that. Here's the actual record for uh, reproduction death. Uh, this one, uh, man, this band, when they came out, they were, they seemed unstoppable and then sort of just, uh, I mean, I think they're, I don't think they're still around now, but they, you know, I went back and I watched this particular video on, on YouTube the other day. It's the strokes with last night, but man, uh, I think this is going for about like 50 bucks just for this. And I paid two ninety nine for it. Just took the sticker off of it, but, um, they were just a great band. Uh, I think they're still around for the most part. I don't know. I mean, most of these bands I really, you know, I followed for maybe about five years or so. And then I just really kind of stopped paying attention to them as my, you know, taste changed. But um, this is another one which I saw, which was Someday. I think this came off of their second album, I believe. Um, but uh, I saw this going online for quite a bit of scratch the other day so which I you know I didn't think this this is definitely not as good as last night I think that was probably their just a huge song that they did my probably my favorite uh, here's the vines with get free kind of again another one-hit wonder 
2002. I want to get free. Guy kind of sounded like he was from Nirvana. Um, just fantastic band. <laughs> just a very, very awesome song. Uh, never quite figured out what's on the cover here. Maybe I'll hold it back a little bit further, but I'm not too sure. Um, now these next ones, these ones are pretty awesome. Uh, I, I will be the first to admit it, but um, I this is a band that I saw their video on MTV and the minute I saw their video on MTV and I'm sure a lot of you remember it um, the minute I saw it I went and I went on eBay and I bought it on vinyl um, let me go grab that real quick here There it is right here. It was the only place I could find it on vinyl was on eBay, and that's the White Stripes. Uh, this one is on red vinyl, again, something that's very, very desirable, but <clears throat> I bought every single seven inch of theirs that I could find. So this is the big three killed my baby and uh, red bowling ball. Um, this came out on, I think, Sympathy for the Record Industry, I think is what it was here. One of their earlier ones. Um, this track was off of the the first album. Well, the the you know the not the first one, but the you know the big uh, album. I guess it would be their second album, uh, and that is the Hotel Yorba, which they do a uh, cover of Rated X. And what's really cool is <clears throat> I you know just looked at this the other day, but it's produced by Brendan or recorded by Brendan Benson. And of course, Brendan Benson was in the you know the Raconteurs with Jack White. But you know even back in two thousand one, you know those guys were you know hanging out doing stuff together. Um, this is Lord Send Me an Angel, and you're pretty good looking for a girl. This of course is this is off of their first album from two thousand and one. Um, and the last one, this one is. Uh, this is the video I was talking about. <laughs> Fell in love with a girl. So just totally awesome stuff. So, you know, really, really great stuff. So I'm glad you guys stuck around and uh, watched the uh, little trip with me. So, you know, essentially your 2000, 2001, stuff like that, that would be what I'd be showing. So a little bit of a time capsule, if you will. So. I'm going to uh, go put on a record and uh, enjoy the rest of my afternoon, so I'll see you all down the trail.